Guys, welcome back to the channel. So quick update, I am recording this video on a new camera. I went from a Sony a7 III to a Nikon Z7, which I know probably doesn't mean a lot to a lot of people, but I was having problems with the Sony, so I jumped ship over to Nikon. But if I have problems with the, the focusing and the lighting in this video, I'm still figuring this camera out. What we're doing today is some beams on the ceiling, and let me show you what I got here. So what I'm going to be constructing these beams out of is this one by right here and this two by right here. I like to keep it real simple. I keep all the lumber as the dimension it comes in so I don't have to rip anything down. This is all Windsor One and a lot of people have been asking me how I like the Windsor One. It is a dream to work with. Every board here is a true three quarter and it's all perfect. The primer is amazing. So I have nothing but good to say about these Windsor One boards and that's that's all we're going to use now. So I have the ceiling all laid out in there. I went ahead and snapped all my chalk lines. The good news is I'm not going to hit any obstacles, any vents, any lights, but the bad news is I'm missing joist on five of the eight beams. So I'm going to have to go up and install some blocking up in the attic in between the joist of that ceiling in there. It's not a big deal, but this is tough because I'm actually doing this alone today. John called in sick. So it's, it's not the kind of job you want to do alone, but the show must go on. And he has the 12 inch sliding miter saw that I was hoping to use today, but I got my uh, 12 inch uh, fixed miter saw right here. So I'll make it work. I'll flip the board around and then chop it, finish the cut for these two by tens. So I'm going to be putting two by 10 blocking up there. I already went up there in the attic and looked at what I need to do. So that's what I'm going to do right now. All right. Some people are probably wondering why I don't use toggle bolts for this. You can use toggle bolts for alignment, but they're not recommended for substantial weight and they're, they're not even recommended for overhead use actually. But we do use them for overhead use just to get things lined up like on a coffered ceiling or even in this case, but since I'm just doing this alone today, there's, there's no way I'm gonna be using toggle bolts. And one of the few tools I kept from my rigid days was this light right here. They make the best light. That camera is actually very deceptive. It looks brighter than it is on the screen of that camera than it is in real life. Now this big beam right here is called an LVL and what that stands for is laminated veneer lumber. I'll try to get you an up close view on this. You can see all those pieces of wood glued together. It's a very, very strong piece of wood right there. So that's supporting quite a bit. And it's actually the span from a, a huge opening, which this is the kitchen. Then you pass through right here. And then this is the living room. And I'm actually gonna be putting a large beam right under this LVL. So there's no need to put any blocking for that because I can just screw right into it. And then I would like to Larry Hahn one of these nails, but I don't think I'm that good. Basically a one hit wonder. Dang, I don't know how that guy did it. Well, this is just a 12 ounce hammer anyway, so that's probably not the best for framing, but it's what I got. And we'll drop another one down on the side. So we got our first piece of blocking in right here. I'm just gonna put this insulation back 
fill the cavity back in. And I gotta do that 20 more times. So I'm gonna get on that and then we'll go down and I could show you guys the next step for installing the framing on these beams. So if you're wondering how I'm gonna remember where I put these blockings, um, I pretty much referenced this long board right here. Not sure what that's called, but I've got one here, one in the middle, and one over there, and then one pretty much almost against the wall over there. So I'm referencing those. So when I go back down and get in the room and look at the ceiling, I'll know like kind of a ballpark where they're gonna be. So I'll be able to find them with my stud finder. So here's a look at the room now, the ceiling. And I'm gonna say it was pretty intense doing all this alone. Um, I don't recommend it, but thank God for lasers and chalk lines because that's how I got to this point. Now, if you remember that big LVL, that laminated veneer lumber beam, that's represented by this red line right here. Actually, that's not represented by it, but they're pretty much in the same location. That red line right there represents where I'm gonna put the edge of my framing lumber. And that goes for that big one, and then all of these other eight as well. I'm gonna put my framing lumber right on the edge of those. Now you'll notice some blue lines up there as well. That represents the furthest extent of the crown molding. So I marked those off so I could see like, am I gonna hit a light or a vent or whatever? And I lucked out on those, so I'm not gonna hit any obstacles. So that's what those blue lines are. Here's my framing lumber right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a block like this. This is upside down. And then I'm gonna nail this block right here, right there in that place. So when I pick this big piece up and I slide it into place, this piece will already be on the wall and it'll set right where I needed it to set. That's the idea. So what I can do now, I'm gonna space this about right there and then I'm gonna nail this from the bottom up. And that's just to hold it for now. I am going to uh, screw that also as well. But this just helps it so I don't have to sit there and mess around trying to hold it in place as I screw it. But I'm gonna do this several more times, put these blocks in so the bottom of my beam will actually get fastened to these blocks right here. So now what I can do, I can flip this thing over and I can screw it from the top down and I'll need two for each piece of blocking and I'll just nail it, nail it <coughs> and then that'll, it's just easier that way so I don't have to hold the screw and the impact at the same time. These nails are really cool, they have threads. Oh, that's not bad at all. Heck no, it's easy. Okay, so now what I can do, I can just flip this thing over and I'll do that same thing, that same little trick where I take the screws and I just get them started with the hammer. So while I'm up there holding this with one hand, I don't have to like, having the third hand to like hold the screw, but I think this is gonna work. So keep moving along here. So I'm gonna put this spacer block here and then we'll put this there. All right, so let's have a look at what we've got going on now. This probably come in more clear for you, but that's in place now. Now I'll take my big unit out there and just slide it up into there. And I left this like a little loose with a little slop in it because I don't want to be fighting it. So that's what I got going on there. And I think some of you are probably wondering why this isn't centered on the beam here or, I mean, or on this uh, wall. Well, it's because like I was talking about earlier with the crown, 
we want that crown to just be continuous without like a weird transition against the beam here. So that's why we're doing that. There will be no crown on this side. So it's all focused on this side. Having an issue with this, I can't get this to go over. So what I'll do, it's actually good that I have that block there because it's right where I need it to be. So I'll just quick clamp it over to the block and boom, right on our red line again. If you work for OSHA, close your eyes real quick. So if you remember up in the attic, I was talking about I had a reference point to where my blocking would be. So I'm in that location and then I can just um, verify with this where the blocking is and you can see those three lights that is where it is and then I can move it over here as well and it's going to be the same location so I know that's exactly where my blocking is so I'm going to mark that off. So now I can clearly see where I can screw into. That's the uh, 2x10 that I put up in there. And I will continue to do that for all those locations for all five beams that I put blocking for. So we've got another ghetto jig here for you, a one by nailed to a two by. And the spacing here is the thickness of a two by, an inch and a half. So this will just get brad nailed right there, right on that red line. And uh, it doesn't have to be perfect, just as long as it'll be enough for my two by six to be supported by this piece right here. So I'll nail this up there to that with 18 gauge brads and slide it in just like I did this one right here. Same concept. Since the length of these boards, or the room rather, is 18 foot, I can only get these 1x6s and 16 foot, so I have to make this little filler seam. So this is as far as I'm going to get today, which I'm pretty happy with. I've got the large uh, framing up and two small ones. I've got six more of those to do, and those will be going all over there. But I'm pretty happy with the progress, got this all figured out. And really this is the hard part. Once I get this up, it's pretty much just a matter of trimming it out. 
which is not too bad. So I'm happy with this progress, and I'm going to call it a day there, and we'll start on this again in the morning.